<laughs> Ronaldinho success! Ugh, this sucks. Why can't you play as Grover and Big Bird? Mm. That's my impression of the the internet. Or at least the internet reacting to this game. Seems like there's people out there just actively rooting for this game to fail. Bunch of dicks. Anyway, um, so we got Ren and Stimpy. Man, that, that render is just a, a little too real. It's too real. I, I don't know what that was a reference to. But anyway, here we go. We got, we got Lucy Loud, uh, one of the favorite uh, Nickelodeon characters of Pan Pizza. He uh, openly admitted as much. He had a story about how he uh, met the creator of the Loud House at a convention, and he said, uh, I really like Lucy, and the, the creator said, uh, Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> uh, he, he mentioned that on his podcast at that, that one time. Yeah, funny stuff. Yep. So, as previously stated, I'm kind of surprised they uh, they put Ren and Stimpy in this. I mean, all things considered. But they're here regardless, so let's just enjoy it for what it is. So, on the topic of uh, Ren and Stimpy, I've been looking at a few articles about just how crazy it all was back then, and Somebody pointed out that there really seems to be this overarching theme th throughout the entire show of just gigantic, scary men just with huge muscles. And it's kind of funny when you notice that, and how often it comes up. And You know, it kind of makes you wonder if the, the creator, John Kay, had some kind of, you know, experience as a kid with, like, an abusive dad or something. And, is, where, where is all this fear of giant angry men coming from? Just based on how often it comes up in the show. Gosh, the whole thing was just so out of place for Nickelodeon. And yet Nickelodeon's not even ashamed of it. They're still letting people use these characters all the way in 2021. I mean, when you, when you compare it to other shows, it just... Seems like they got away with so much, you know, and... I told you I'd shoot, but you didn't believe me! Why didn't you believe me? So anyway, um, I've heard rumors that there's gonna be, uh, DLC characters added to this eventually. Not just those two characters that were found on the disc, but right and proper DLC that you have to download from a server somewhere. How much dedicated wham do you need for a server? <clears throat> I think of that video every time I hear the word server. Well, not every time, but but anyway, yeah, staying on topic here, the developers are working on the DLC, and all I can say is they better fucking hurry up. People are getting impatient. And not to mention there's that new Warner Brothers, uh, game that's very similar to this that's being worked on and it's looking pretty sharp but it's pretty clear that it's had more money dumped into it than this did so if they want to stay competitive they better they better get those DLC characters out there keep keep eyeballs on them really makes you wonder how much of a low budget project this was once you you see the Warner Brothers one by comparison you, you start to realize how many things are missing from this, and seems Nickelodeon really cheaped out. As Mr. Krabs says, Show's over, cheapskate! Remember that when he, he tried to make the guy unwatch the movie? <laughs> so anyway, who would be some, uh, some good choices for DLC characters? Uh, I've heard rumors of uh, Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. That, that would be a good pick. Rocco's Modern Life. Did you know that the theme song for Rocco's Modern Life was sung by none other than the B-52s? The type of people who watch Let's Plays probably don't uh, probably don't know about the B-52s, but 
Anyway, I just thought that was some interesting trivia. I don't fucking know. So yeah, the, the thesis of what I'm trying to say here is they better hurry up with the DLC. So, whoever uh, composed the music for this game made sure that the the music on the Turtles level sounds like something out of a Sega Genesis game. The level ends as soon as I say that, but anyway, I thought that was kind of a cool easter egg. I guess you could just look up the soundtrack on your own time if you were that curious about it. But yeah, it's pr practically all the same MIDI instruments. Well, I don't know if they're exactly the same, but they at least sound similar. So it's pretty cool. There are lots of different directions they could have taken with this musically. And they decided to give a, a shout out to the Sega Genesis. You know what they say, Sega Genesis does what Nintendo not Anyway, so yeah, lots of different directions they could have taken with this uh, musically. They could have gotten some live band or something. Some musical group that's already famous, but somebody who's willing to work for cheap too. They probably would have got some some washed up group like like fracking squirrel nut zippers or something. Thank goodness they didn't do that. I mean, I like squirrel nut zippers, but I, I don't think that would really be video game music. Speaking of which, I was watching the the music video for their most popular song, Hell, and um. The woman on the ukulele, I can't seem to tell if that's actually a woman or if that's just a dude in a drag. I feel like that, that could be a very hurtful thing to say if, if it's not a dude in a drag, but... Anyway, that's just an observation. Squirrel nut zippers. Well, cat dog went down fast, didn't he? Just took a few hits. No, that, that's, that's dumb. Just took a few hits. That's, that's a regular Let's Player thing to say. That's a very basic observation. Anyway, reminds me of that mission in Yakuza where you, you have to go to the hoarder house to help the guy clean up and he starts getting violent and tries to fight you. And then when you fight back, he just goes down in one hit. Just BAM! As Emerald Legacy says, BAM! So uh, here's Toph from Avatar. I was never big into Avatar. As a kid I didn't like it because it was one of those shows where you had to watch the episodes in order to understand what was going on. And Nickelodeon never gave enough of a damn to actually air the episodes in order so you, it was very difficult to follow that way. And then as an adult I still don't like it because the fan base is a bunch of fucking soy boys. But that's a story for another time. So before we wrap up here, I just wanted to give my final thoughts on the uh, the roster and the the game as a whole. I do wonder if the this game was sort of a, a wake up call for Nickelodeon that kind of made them realize that in terms of new shows, they've basically done jack shit since like 2010. Because the developers of the game wanted to represent all eras of Nickelodeon, but it's still pretty heavily slanted towards the, the 90s and the 2000s. That they only managed to come up with one lousy show that represents 2010 and beyond, and, and that's The Loud House. I mean, starting in the 2000s, Nickelodeon just gradually became the SpongeBob channel, and they just wanted to have SpongeBob be their one show and nothing else, and it's really reflected in this roster because it was... It was a hell of a struggle to come up with any new Nicktoons to put in this game. If you were to see like a, a bar graph of the different eras represented in this, it would be like uh, maybe, um, I want to say 50% 90s, 49% 2000s, and then just, just 1% 2010s. Those percentages are a little exaggerated, but you get what I'm trying to say. There are no new shows to pick from. So anyway, yeah, good game overall. I think people on the internet need to lighten up a little.